I'm Andrew Rowe, and welcome to the first edition of KHS TV's Night Shift. Tonight we have a special show for you. As you may know, KHS TV was able to cover President Clinton's historic visit to Kingston this past October. We were fortunate enough to be the only news organization in the Hudson Valley to obtain an exclusive interview with the President during his visit. During the next half hour, we'll show you our highlights. Shortly, we'll speak with our political correspondent, James Tile, about the importance of President Clinton's visit to Kingston. Tonight's show encompasses President Clinton's complete visit to our city, from his arrival at the Kingston Ulster Air Park to his departure and our interview with him. You'll meet the people whose lives he touched during his historic visit. Oh, I was thrilled. Um, it was very exciting. Well, my initial reaction was that I almost fainted. We were so excited to see him. We didn't know if he was really going to stop. and we thought that he was just going to wave from his car. So it was exciting enough just to see the Secret Service people. Bill Clinton, undoubtedly one of the most controversial presidents ever. But what would make a man of such power come to Kingston? Cross Street from the Hillside Manor, where President Clinton is scheduled to arrive. He's coming to Kingston to benefit Maurice Hinchy's campaign. I'm on dark here at the Kingston Ulster Airport, where we're awaiting the arrival of President Clinton in about 20 minutes or so. The Kingston Ulster Airport's managerial team was assigned to make sure President Clinton had a comfortable arrival. Well, primarily all our job was was to welcome them in here and uh, give them carte blanche to whatever access they need to the facility, and uh, they basically take care of uh, the security of the president. Um, so is this the highlight of your career here at the uh, airport? Yeah, I've been here two weeks, and uh, you c it doesn't get any better than this. It's the first time in 34 years that a sitting president has came to Alton County. Uh, we're hopefully going to get a interview with them and see what goes down. Although President Clinton did make an appearance for his motorcade, he did not, however, answer or acknowledge the local press. What did you think of uh, Mr. Clinton coming out? It was all right. Only got to see a little bit of him. President Clinton made a surprise stop at Kingston's George Washington Elementary School, where many students and staff received more than just a wave from his limo. When I saw the presidential vehicle drive up, and I knew because it had the presidential uh, insignia on it, and he stepped out of the car, I just stared in disbelief, and then I told the children, there's the President of the United States. This is a one-time thing that will, a one-time event that will happen to you in your lives. I waited like probably half an hour thinking that he wasn't going to come. This was the best day of my life. The visit that he could, uh, he could relate to the kids uh, very easily because he got the chance to meet a President when he was very young also. What did you think when you saw the president up close? I thought that he was going to be um, taller than um, my dad, who's like about this tall. Me too. I thought he was going to be really tall. One of the most rewarding things of the visit was, was that some of the fifth grade students before he came were saying, oh, he's not going to come or he won't drive by and, you know, we're missing our recess. And it was like they were prepared to be disappointed. And then when he stopped and spent so much time with us, it was like they got the message that, you know, sometimes in life really exciting things do happen. What exactly took place on the other side of that limo that day for us from George Washington? Well, uh, Chris Mergendahl and I got a chance to uh, have our picture taken with, uh, with the president and also to have a minute or so to, to speak with him. And I thanked him for stopping at George Washington School. I 
I know he does it every day, but for most of us, this is uh, a once-in-a-life experience. Some of my friends didn't believe it until they um, saw. They said that they um, think that somebody started a rumor and it was fake. They said that um, people are going to want your autographs. <laughs> When he got done, I, I believe that he shook hands with every student and every member of the staff in this school. And then he proceeded on down the street, and his last stop was an elderly woman who he spent at least five minutes talking with. Everywhere I was going in the crowd, the president was coming my way, so it didn't matter which way I was going. Because I would either be by a reporter or mm -hmm. shaking the president's hand. Well, I think um, it made the students feel like they were personally very special and each one mattered that he would stop and make a special visit and come and shake their hands and really show them um, special attention. 475 uh, students with signs and flags, I think it was hard for him to resist. We had no idea that he would be gracious enough to actually stop and get out and shake everybody's hand. It was really very exciting. It was great of him. Hi, I'm Matt Desarrel here on top of a hill overlooking the Hillside Manor, where today, shortly, President Clinton is scheduled to arrive for a luncheon supporting Maurice Hinchy's campaign. We've spoken to Secret Service, who told us that there's a secured area which we can't approach. So we've gathered our equipment up here on the hill to try to get a shot of President Clinton, who's supposedly arriving shortly. The President of the United States. Upon arriving at the hillside, Mr. Clinton was greeted by eager politicians, adoring fans, and local onlookers. He also spoke only positive things about Mr. Hinchy's campaign and had many thanks to the New York community for its help and support over the years. My heart is filled with gratitude to the people of the United States, and especially to the people of New York who have been so wonderful to me through two elections, giving me the state's 33 electoral votes, along with Al Gore. Last time, about 59% of the vote in 52 of the 62 counties supported our efforts, and you will never know how grateful I am. I did go to the luncheon with my mother and I, and we were so excited to see him. We heard his speech, which um, we thought was so well done. He didn't even talk from papers. He was able to say what was in his heart, and then he came into the room that we were in. And then he spoke to my mother, and my mother is, is quite old now, and she said, I only wish you'd run for a third term, because I'd vote for you the way I voted for Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and he bent down and he kissed her. So we had a wonderful experience with the president, we really did. I'm here with KHS-TV political correspondent Jamie Satile. Jamie, what brought the president to Kingston? The president came here to uh, benefit Maurice Hinchy's campaign and to um, help his wife get elected to the Senate, and he also came to help Al Gore get elected president. Was he successful in helping uh, Congressman Hinchy? Uh, yeah, Congressman Hinchy uh, got reelected. elected okay. And as well as uh, Hillary Clinton? Yeah, Hillary obviously got elected to... Senate. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. How are you, Mr. President? How are you? Yeah. Um, my question for you is, as you look back over your wonderful presidency of eight years, what would you like to be remembered, remembered for in history? Well, it's a little soon to say, but for sure I'd like to be remembered for uh, turning America around and helping to not only move the economy forward, but to improve the environment, improve education and health care and drive down the crime rate. But maybe even more important than that, to try to make all the American people feel that they were a part of our country 
and that uh, we were on their side. That, that's what AmeriCorps was all about. That's what uh, our efforts to help uh, with more support for children were all about. Uh, uh, that's what the efforts for hate crimes and a lot of the other initiatives I've taken have been designed to reach out across all the lines that divide Americans and bring us together. And so I hope that I'll be remembered for that, and I hope I'll be remembered for being a force for peace around the world and in making America a friend to people in places that haven't heard from us much before. It was his presence just kind of carried when he came out of the car. Mr. Clinton, thank you for your time over at George Washington School, first of all. Yeah, right. You gave us the opening line to our news broadcast in the morning, which we air every morning, every day. Um, I was wondering what you'd like to say to our high school population of 2,200 kids. First of all, I, I liked your community very much, and I, I received a wonderful reception here, and I'm very grateful for that, and I'm grateful right. for the support I've received from the people of New York in these last two presidential elections and throughout eight years of service. And I would just urge the young people to develop and keep an interest in public life and the issues that affect them. This election today will affect uh, high school students more than it will most of the voting age population because the decisions that will be made will affect them a long time into the future. The other thing I'd, I'd like to do is to urge as many of them as possible to go on with their education, to get as much education as possible. Uh, because we're living in a world where what you can earn depends in no small measure of what, uh, on not only what you know, but what you can keep learning for a lifetime. So be a good citizen, learn as much as you can, have a good time. He didn't deny anybody handshakes and he just very like gratefully shook everybody's hand and it's very nice. Who are you going for for the World Series, Mr. President? <laughs> I'm president. That means I still don't have to take a decision. Why did you ask the president that question? Well, because other people here and we're asking them all political questions and such and I didn't understand it. So I thought that I'd loosen up the tension between them a little bit and so I just asked them who would win the World Series. Oh, well, I'll tell you this. It, uh, Maybe the best World Series we've had in 50 years. That first game was the that was the one first, game, last wasn't it? last night was good, but the first game that had the most interesting man. baseball I've seen in a World yeah. Series game in a long time. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about the president coming out today? Um, I don't know. It was pretty awesome. Uh, you know, we got out of class, so that was a plus. But uh, it was pretty cool you know, to know that you know he's a real person to talk to us. You know, little high schoolers. Um, you know, he overlooked uh, the bigger corporations or the networks and uh, came to talk to us. After entertaining our questions, President Clinton and his select cabinet members boarded Marine Force One. Having the opportunity to meet President Clinton was an unforgettable experience which I will remember always. One thing that we'll all surely remember is the tight security which President Bill Clinton had. I remember at one point uh, there was a fire truck which was securing the area right in front of a parking lot over at the airport. Well, to get his attention, I grabbed the KHS TV sign and climbed up on the fire truck, wondering whether I'd get snipered out or not. And uh, that was right before he got out of the limo. So security was tight, but we got his attention nonetheless. You really don't get to see the security behind the scenes. The Secret Service and police allowed for the president to have a safe visit. Let's take a look at the action. The president keeps our country safe by controlling our armed forces. But who keeps the president safe? Cops. Cops. And more cops. In an exclusive interview with a Secret Service agent, I was unable to uncover any information on the security that day. Can you just comment on uh, how the security went today? Just anything about it? Do you think it was tight? Do you think it was sufficient? Just anything? As you can see, the Secret Service and police were unable to comment. Here, snipers set up shop at the Kingston Ulster Air Park. They made sure local residents didn't breach the secured area. Snipers were also posted at the Hillside Manor, where security was a major concern. And lastly, the K-9 unit was used to sniff out suspicious guests at both the hillside and air park. President Clinton was not the only big name politician to come to Kingston within the recent weeks. That's right, Mark. Governor George Pataki paid a visit 
to our newly renovated City Hall. Governor George Pataki visited Kingston's old City Hall last Friday to promote his new mortgage plan called Remodel New York. This program is designed to make home ownership and renovation more affordable for first-time home buyers. And without further ado, I introduce to you the Governor of New York State, George Pataki. Mayor Gallo, thank you. It's great being back here in Kingston. And you're right, I did take a walk through about two years ago. The building did not look like this. Congratulations. It looks terrific, and it is what it should be, a symbol of the renaissance of Kingston, as we're working to renovate all the older cities and communities of New York State. Governor Pataki was also very happy to entertain any questions Kingston citizens might have. What is New York uh, doing in terms of great regions program that we have in our state? Well, the regions program is important, and what we're doing now is we're uh, uh, raising standards and making sure that everyone's going to be able to read and uh, do math properly in order to graduate from high school. We think it's the appropriate thing, and uh, more than that, we're not just uh, improving the educational system. We want to make sure that when people graduate from Kingston High School, they can stay right here. And we're trying to improve the economy, more jobs so that you can get a job right here, better access to college. We have new uh, tuition assistance programs, so we want you to get a great education at Kingston High. We then, if you want to go to work, we want you to have a job right here in Kingston. If you want to go to school, we want to make it easier for you. We're trying to put the whole package together. The effect is not just that one house gets improved, but a street starts to get improved. And the volunteer work on Henry Street by Habitat for Humanity and our local junior league and, uh, and, and the good work that, that uh, happens there and, and how that ripples out through the communities and making not just housing more affordable, more quality, but uh, also making it our whole neighborhoods better as a result. Spreading the news. I'm leaving today. Again, I'm here with political correspondent Jamie Satow. Jamie, how did Governor Pataki impact our community? He announced a new mortgage plan that'll help uh, homeowners um, receive loans and that are uh, low interest so they can uh, buy or renovate their new homes. We hope you enjoyed our first edition of Night Shift. Join us next month when we'll bring you more exciting local news. We'd like to end today with a quote by Cynthia Wertheimer, a Daily Freeman reporter who is on the scene with us at the Kingston Ulster Air Park. Uh, all that, I thought, oh, well, if he stopped at GW School, he's not going to stop here. And then when he stopped here, it was really quite, it was much more than I expected. I thought it was just terrific. We had heard this morning he was going to stop and talk to high school students, and when he did, I thought, well, then he's, uh, maybe he's a man of his word, or at least his press person's word, I don't know. But it was, it was, it was very well worth it, and uh, makes for a great story, great story.